two. Good evening, good evening. It is time for the show. Obviously, you know who's sitting next to me here. Just before we get into too much, I just want to holler this out for those in Patreon. I just posted a video about two hours ago. It's up. Second part's done. Probably be up by Saturday morning. I'm taking tomorrow off to take care of a medical issue with my eyes, so I will not be around for most of tomorrow. But let me have Dom introduce himself. If you don't know who he is and you haven't signed up for him, you've got something wrong mentally, you better go ahead and sign up for Dom's channel. I've got a link at the top here of the chat. It's also at the very top of the description box as well. Why don't you take it over before we do have a special little video clip I'm going to show in just a minute here. Well, and if you have something wrong mentally, I'm just the guy for you because I just got back from my regular full-time job as a neuropsychologist. That's what I do during the day. And uh, I... Uh, that wasn't feel... planned. <laughs> that wasn't planned, right? But I, uh, I, I like the segue, Don. But I, I, I fill as much other time as possible with family time and reselling. Uh, so... Uh, you know, I go by the name Primetime Treasure Hunter because I love hunting for all sorts of treasures at uh, estate sales, garage sales, rummage sales, flea markets, private picks, all sorts of places. And, uh, you know, I take people around on my channel to these different picks and I also take people to uh, other uh, businesses, other people who pick. Uh, recently went to Mr. Buys a lot, went to a guy named Jeff who lives by me, has a killer storage unit filled with all sorts of great paper items that, you know, Don uh, would love as well. If he got to, you know, go in there, he'd have a field day. So you, you, uh, you got three um, <laughs> Mr. Buys a lot videos up too. I think you got the last one up. Uh, yeah. Too. The finale just went up. I broke it into three parts. So yeah. So it was a lot of fun and um, you know, I, I had a great time. And so I like doing that stuff on my channel. Uh, I've got a Facebook group as well called the reselling resource center. And so, uh, you know, it's just, just very busy and uh, continuing to grow and uh, continuing to uh, learn every single day and uh, appreciate you uh, being here and uh, being a part of the Don and Dom shows that we've been doing for a while now. A couple of years now, I think. The yeah. longest, longest, Going at strong. least two years, I think. They they renewed the contract and uh, we're coming up again for negotiations and hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll keep going for another season. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we will there. I don't see any issues. Let me just call a thank you to auction for you for the Sufa $5 Super Jet. Thank, thank you very you. kindly. And, oh. and, and I want to congratulate her because you saw, Don, you were on last night. You saw the thrift battle and uh, T pulled it off in an epic round five uh, thrift battle matchup against Mike, the storage auction pirate. With so his baseball. Lot... I, he had a, had a sports yeah. card, I think. It was a sports card battle at the end for the last round. But there were all sorts of amazing items on that show. So congratulations, T, and welcome to the Sweet 16. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into the topic i spent some time and i i did put together a video we're gonna let it roll here i think mine and dom's thinking on what happens with these things and what we do is pretty much the same thing um i'm asked quite often lately more so than ever before in my life about scams scammers and the whole works now i just had somebody try to pull a fast one the other day if you use your brain and you understand, you know what you're doing, you can at least alleviate some of this and put it on, put it back towards eBay with actual facts. There's only one way to sway anything in my book. It's to pr produce facts and to get other people that are having similar issues to take care of it. So we're going to hop over to a video. I don't do this a whole bunch of times and I he hesitant to do it today, but we're going to put this out here and I'm going to play this and we'll go from there. I'll have Dom step in afterwards and give Dom some time to discuss how he would have handled and other issues to look for as well. So give me just a second here. This is the item I sold here. It was listed for $14.50 with $3.45 in shipping. It's an excellent condition copy. You can see how nice the gloss is. The label's great. Not only that, I actually recorded this 45 from my own personal collection prior to me listing it. It's one that doesn't show up very often. It's not super expensive, but you can't get this song anywhere else. So I've played this record from start to finish on both sides, and I know what the condition is. I graded it as a VG mid-grade. Clearly, it's actually over that. This is probably at a VG+, plus, but I usually grade under. I personally looked at this record. It was actually cleaned before it was shipped as well. So there was no way on earth there was anything wrong with this record. So what do I get? I get an email from somebody, not just one, but this person sent four of the exact same emails to me. 
Now, I originally thought that that was a mistake, accidentally clicked the same thing. But when I look at the time frame, they're minutes apart, so it's not something done by eBay. This person was trying to scare me by bombing me with emails, hoping that I'll see that, be worried about it, and instantly give him a refund because he's been getting refunds left and right by claiming false things on cheap items all this time. As you can see, please respond. This final is so scratched, I will not attempt to play it and damage my stylus. How could you post an original price or accept my $14.79 when its worth is under again? Please respond. So he's already complaining about the price right off the bat. The minute you see somebody complaining about a price that was an offer that he put in, you know something's going on in my book. Again, this is BS. He actually sent it to try and make me get nervous about it. So I actually looked at this person's feedback, and what I did is I looked at left for others before I ever decided to respond to his actual uh, request that I sent him a bad record. So what I noticed is these sorts of feedback. Seller has a positive attitude for buyer's purchase. Without a doubt, this person complained about the disc this person bought from a seller, and they fixed it for them. So I already automatically see something going on here right off the bat by the wording on this one here. And then another one, great seller attention towards the buyer's purchase. D again, complained about another package here, and he got it fixed. And another one here, great seller who cares about your purchase success so here's another one great seller who cares about your purchase success so again these are ones that I would flag and try and track down if it looks like this guy is trying to pull a fast one on me and yet another one great concern seller for eBay buyers for their purchases uh, it's broken English doesn't matter but the point again here another problem with something that he purchased and yet another one here, this person is not a nice person basically from what this person says. And yet another one here showing me again what this person is doing. Wrong with vinyl quality judgment and seller fast refund. So this person figures out that they can get a refund when they complain about a cheaper disc. Now here was the one that really set me off. Seller turned negative to positive as soon as I emailed them. So as soon as this person emails somebody, he now expects them to give him that record for free. So here's yet another one. Seller turned negative to a positive. And he's got a whole bunch of these that say seller turned a negative into a positive. So this person has figured out that they can get free records by simply complaining about a cheap disc. And usually the seller will be worried about negative feedback and they'll just automatically give them the item for free. It's cheap. It's not much money. So this person is going after getting cheap records for free. Now, I've looked into who this person was, and from what I see, they are a record dealer probably selling this. Lord knows how many of these free records that they have actually received. So they already have a pre-set up statement that they already know they're going to use over and over and over again every time they complain about a record. He'll pick cheaper records, he'll complain about something, and he just gets them for free constantly. I've looked through his account. He's gotten dozens and dozens and dozens of records for free by just complaining. This person could be making hundreds if not thousands of dollars by constantly doing this exact same thing. So my response is, sorry to hear you are not happy with the record. We offer completely free returns regardless of the reason. If you simply open up a return, you will be given a prepaid label to send it back. As to condition, I actually took an MP3 of both sides, and it plays as VG mid-grade record should, which is the condition stated in the listing. We have been selling records for 30 years and grade correctly. Our price, though, is our price based on others we personally have sold. Again, please simply open up a return and send it back for a full refund. Sorry you aren't happy with it. So the response I get from him, you are a terrible eBay seller. This is now time consuming due to your lack of vinyl quality rating and taking advantage with an online purchase with buyers. Thank you so much. So my next response to his terrible comment here is, boy, I'm not being nice because I'm offering you a completely free return and full refund. Last I checked, that is good service and how all businesses run. Not sure what else I could do. I was hoping he would actually say you could have refunded because I knew that's what this gentleman wanted. Wanted. This person expected me to instantly refund him the minute he complained about it. Clearly, obviously from his response, doesn't want to send it back at all. 
So his next response is, please don't waste you time sending me emails. I will delete it without reading any messages. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you the next message I got because for some reason, after I filed a report with eBay, I can't find it. But I basically told him I realize what he's doing, that he's getting free records, that he is a scammer. I will be reporting him to eBay immediately. I also will be reporting him to the FBI wire fraud department for online theft because what he is doing is doing this across state lines and this is fraud and theft so again he didn't want to return it right after I send the last message then he opens up a return so the minute he opens up the return I'm safe and he can't really do much to me at this point at all he is a scammer without a doubt hoping to get items for free now most people would have just given it to him and not risked it when he opens up the return as a top rated plus seller with free 30 day returns again you have to have 30 day returns for this to qualify once he opens it up he can't leave me feedback anymore so so i am free and clear and avoided giving this fake scam buyer any money nor does he get to keep the record so here's his actual return and as you can see he put that it doesn't work or is defective so he has changed his story since i called him out on his scam that he was doing Again, he said he wasn't going to read anymore, but I can guarantee you whenever somebody says that, they are going to read it. They know what they're doing. He was trying to scare me even from this point. So even after he sent the thing telling me that I'm a terrible uh, seller, terrible customer service, he was expecting me to go in and give him a refund at that point to shut him up and to worry about it. So that is what his ploy was. He's trying to scare somebody into giving him the refund immediately. This is the whole attempt on these. Now, if you're not doing the 30-day returns, you're not a top-rated seller plus, you could be risking yourself, though, with cases like this. If you don't understand how the process works, how feedback works, you could be risking it. That, again, is why many sellers will just give in to people like this and give them their money back and let them keep the item. But I am not one of those. I didn't do anything wrong. I undergraded the disc instead of overgrading it. I did follow through with reporting to eBay. I filed a case. If he sends this record back, I will also file that he falsely returned it for a, a fake reason as well because he said one thing in the email and then he's saying something else on the return. Now, part of the complaints I filed with eBay is that they need to check into how many full-fledged refunds this seller got. Most other sites can track that. This is something that eBay should be tracking as well. If somebody is getting 100 free items a year because they're complaining about it, something isn't right. There's no way I can see that many sellers messing up on the condition, especially ones that have a ton of good feedback and that have been selling records for years and years. Now, I know as well that this person is a scammer because I started emailing those folks that he left those feedbacks that I showed you for, and everyone said the same thing. He complained even though that the disc was fine and got a free refund. He's picking cheap records to do this to, so he saves money. He assumes for a couple bucks, someone's just going to give him his money back instead of risking sending the record back. That is his whole attempt here. Again, he may not even send the record back. He may have opened up the return in the hopes that I will just refund him to shut him up. Now, since I'm sending these out to random sellers as well, I did point out that he had some negative feedback that if he emailed eBay for business, he could instantly get that removed because someone left personal information in the feedback and also the feedback that they left was inaccurate accurate and totally unrelated to the item itself. So I wanted to help the person since they were going to give me a few moments of their time, hopefully. So that's usually how I get people to respond when I ask these questions. Again, every single seller that this person has bought from that they left those screwy feedbacks turned a negative to a positive had the exact same experience that I did. They had a complaint about a record they knew was good. They had a complaint saying that the condition was wrong or something, and they just refunded him immediately. This is the game they're playing. So it doesn't have to be the expensive items that they're going to con you on. They're going to con you on those $5, 10 or $15 items because they know it won't be worth your time, they're thinking, for you to mess around with sending a record back that they say isn't any good. So we are back. As somebody made a comment there, and I did time them out thinking just move on this is no big deal making a Karen comment I have to address this this strategy is what you do if somebody's ripping you off from a thousand dollars five dollars ten dollars and if somebody's ripping somebody a hundred people off for five bucks that's five hundred dollars so 
if you keep letting people do this, it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And again, it whether it's a thousand dollars or a ten dollar item, you do the same thing. I am not going to move on from a thousand dollar item. And if you don't know how to do this, again, that's why this video is here. You're not going to be able to track it down to figure out what they're doing to have proof that this person has done it to dozens of other people. That's the point. You need to know how to investigate this. Hate to change that for a second here. I'm going to hop this over to Dom. He's going to address his take on what he would do in similar situations. I know you've had some where you've had some scammers. I've seen some of your videos where you did that as well. So I will pass it off to you if that's all right with you. Sure. Yeah, it's funny because when you sent me that clip uh, earlier today, I was laughing while I was watching it because I was like, this is exactly the same thing that I do, how I handle these these situations. Um, so a couple th or several things I would point out. So number one, uh, I think as Don shows, it's really important to know your items because when someone then makes that overture to you, they reach out to you and they tell you there's, there's something wrong. If you don't really know, you're not familiar with your item, you just took a quick picture of it, listed it and sent it out. Then you know, you might start doubting yourself in terms of hmm, maybe this person is right. But, you know, as Don said, he re it's just like with me with comic books. You know, I know my comics, for example. You know, I, I, I grade them myself just like Don grades his records. I'm intimately familiar with them. Uh, and so, you know, when someone then would make may maybe some sort of claim afterwards, you know, I would know, you know, if there was a, a chance that it was accurate or not. So I, I first start there, Don, about knowing the items. I have a bunch of stuff to say, so maybe you want to actually, after I mention these things, maybe just add a little bit to it. But uh, or, or fully, like people ask, well, you, I sell thousand dollar. I've sold three, four thousand dollar records before. I send them out just like anything, but I record them. I do a bunch of things. They're insured, signature. Everything you do is a risk, but you got to mitigate it the best you can. You can look at your bidders before the auction ends. You can see where you're going. If they've got a bunch of activity on their account before you actually end the auction, you can contact eBay, you know, and pull something with that. There are some things you can do, your risk and things like that as well, too. So how you set up your, your account, you can block people from bidding for certain reasons on your items as well, too. So a lot of people don't know that. It's in the settings. There's, there's a bunch of settings that can help you with these things. So, yep. So yeah, so number one, I'd say again, you know, knowing the item that that's very very important. Uh, number two, and this is something I'm very interested in, you know, just based on my own profession, is looking for patterns of behavior, which Don did very well there. I mean, he was like Sherlock Holmes going through that um, <laughs> you know, that the, the feedback there. And a lot of people don't realize that you could do that. That you could, and that's a key point that I think a lot of people will get out of this video is that you can see the feedback that people leave for others. That's very important. In fact, I would even say that if you're ever concerned about, let's say, an offer comes into you and you're, you know, you're not too sure, you know, based on you know what maybe you have, it's a high priced item. Person doesn't have that much feedback, maybe have like a hundred feedbacks or whatever, and you're a little worried about going through with the transaction, go in and look, look at the feedback left for others. And then you could see, oh, wait a minute, you know, there's a, there's a pattern. And also, by the way, look at the feedback that's been left for them, because yes, you can't leave negative feedbacks for buyers, but you could look at the positive feedbacks that have been left and actually read them and see, you'll see person doesn't pay for their items, you know? So you might decide, Hmm, maybe I don't want to accept an offer from this person because there's five people that have said that over the last six months, for example. So, um, you know, going through looking for patterns of behavior before and after can help you in terms of, you know, making a decision on what you want to do with a, with a case um, either before or afterwards. It can help you build a case to eBay if you need to, which gets into my, set, my, my third point about this, which is that you can actually call eBay and or talk to a representative and they will actually look into it for you. And they will, they can even tell you, depending on who you're talking to, if there is a pattern of behavior by this buyer in which they're doing this to people and they might not realize it until you actually mention it to them and they actually look into it and they will stand up in those situations and um, help sellers out in those kind of situations in which uh, there's there is buyer abuse. I know we complain sometimes about things with eBay, but there are instances where they actually do 
stick up for sellers and go against uh, buyer abuse. So um, that that's another point. Those patterns that Don was looking for, eBay could look for them uh, as well. If so, we can um, find them, they sure as heck better be able to find them a lot quicker than we do. They should have a report that says how many times this this buyer got a free item. And it's it's this guy's gotten a bunch of them. So right off the bat, you know, they should be able to, they should have already been able to know that. That should be part of their security for the entire platform, in my mind. Amazon does it, and I know they do. Yeah, and, and that kind of relates to another point, which is that, you know, when you're reading the, the the comments, sometimes you have to use, and this is perfect analogy for Sherlock Holmes, you have to use inferential reasoning. You know, like Don was inferring correctly based on what this guy was saying that, he must have, he only leave that kind of feedback up if you're getting people to give you free items. That's the I only way. The very first one that right. had the, the least inference that it was a, a, a return <laughs> or a refund. I, I did the very least one. That very first one is the first person I emailed to see if that was true. And sure enough, it just piled on down from there. Right. Because the buyer's not going to always say, hey, thank you very much for the free item. You know, it's not going to always be that blatant. Sometimes you have to read between the lines a little bit. And again, you're looking for patterns and looking for what is the most logical explanation in terms of what you're seeing. So the other thing I hear, I hear a echo, Don. I don't know if you have another thing open or something. Not that I'm aware of. No, shouldn't be anything. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Uh, here. I don't know if anyone else hears it, but I'll keep going. I'm not sure. So um, the other thing is that when you look at that message that was um, written, you'll see the all caps that was on there in terms of the please respond and stuff. Um, you know, that was an attempt by that person to generate a sense of immediacy in you, like you were saying. Um, that, that was on purpose. And that's something that a lot of scammers will do is they will try to generate that sense of immediacy. Yeah, Intimidation reason, almost. Yeah. For some reason I'm echoing. I'm not sure why. It doesn't sound like an echo on my end. Yeah. People are hearing it on, on your side. I don't know why. On did my you change, side. Did you make, it could have been when, did you just make a change with the microphone or anything? No, I turned, I muted it earlier just so I wouldn't be talking while we were watching the video. I do. I sound like the all powerful Oz. Well, what I could do, I could come out and try to come back in, and maybe that'll that'll help it. I don't know. Because it's on your end, they're saying? Um, yeah, they're hearing it on my end. I don't know. It just like happened all of a sudden. It just started happening. Is it my crazy. voice or just yours? No, it's mine for some Midwest reason. Midwest Picker, uh, Dave says no echo here. Uh, yeah. Oh, echo, now echo. some people... Some people say they're hearing it's it. Dom is not. echoing, so I guess it's just you. Now, yeah, now it says me. you sound good. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Now I still hear it all. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Um, Don, click, cl click the three dots next to my um, next to my panel, and there could be uh, an audio setting you might want to click. It there. says edit mic setting. Yeah, click that. Echo cancellation is on. Yeah, click. Oh, I wanted to make sure you had that on. It's already on. You already have that on. All right. Um, I, maybe I'll just bounce out of here and pop back in and see if that made it go away. Yeah, I don't know what else to do. I'm not. I don't see any other options on my end. Yeah, and if it's we just tried, on your end, we tried echo cancellation. Um, I'll try to turn the volume down a little or mic sensitivity. Let Let me turn it off and turn it back on once. Maybe that might do All something. Right. Thank I don't you. hear it now. I think it's gone. It's gone. It's all clear. I turned it on and off. Maybe that did yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, folks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know bad. what that was, but yeah. But what we were saying is that um, th what that person was trying to do with the all caps was trying to um, create a sense of immediacy to put pressure on you. That's a characteristic, by the way, of many online scammers. Um, they'll do that across all types of scams, so not just this one. So that's uh, you know that's something important as well. You got to be you got to resist that. You got to try to put the emotions aside and like you know Don was doing, try to think logically through it and uh, and sort through it. Um, the other thing I completely completely agree with, and I use the same exact thing, is the free returns strategy that Don is talking about. Because if you're top uh, top rated plus, you have the 30 day returns, free free returns. Um, that is going to help you and protect you big time, uh, because if a person is scamming you, 
you're going to get this kind of resistance in which they say, well, they don't want to return the item. You know, I remember I had this exact same thing happen that happened to you, Don. And I told the person, okay, sure. You know, by the way, good customer service as well. Like how I say the same thing in my videos, start off by saying sorry and by saying sorry, and then put your explanations in the middle. That's exactly what I do as well. Good, bad, good. You end with yeah, the good Exactly. Part. It packs it that way. But, you know, if it's a legitimate return request, then um, the person should not have a problem with returning the items. Um, you know, they're going to get a, you know, they're going to get a prepaid envelope that they could just smack on there, you know, send it off and, um, you know, shouldn't really be any big problem They're You know, they would you know, get a refund, but, um, they're, when they resist that and they don't want to do that and they just say, well, I just want the refund right now without having to send the item back. That's a huge, huge red flag. And, you know, you were responding appropriately to the situation and then the person is not responding appropriately and kind and they just start throwing personal insults at you calling you a terrible seller soon as people start getting into name calling like that and getting personal then you know that they've lost the argument and because that's the last that's the only thing that they could resort to and that's something scammers will do as well uh, lots of online scammers will turn to intimidation techniques uh you know and try to get you worried that they're going to leave a negative feedback, even though this person didn't explicitly say that. But what some of them don't know is that eBay does protect you from negative feedbacks in these situations. You literally will not get one. Or if they did leave one, they it would get removed. Uh, so it's not going to happen. So you, that's why I use it. a lot of people say, well, I'm never going to offer you know free returns on anything. I'm never going to do 30 day returns, any kind of anything like that. But it really is to your advantage, especially in these kind of situations. And and if you're really doing things properly for most categories that you're selling in, you really shouldn't have that many returns anyway. I mean, I barely get them. So, you know, one exception might be clothing. But, you know, outside of that, for collectibles and stuff, you should be good. So. Yeah. Same thing with us. I don't, I almost never have them. We've done free 30 day free returns since eBay made it a requirement for top rated plus that's been years. And yeah. I could count on between probably one hand, the majority of my returns in, in any given year usually. So, and, and I actually do, um, some people are going to think this is crazy, but I have to tell you the logic behind it. I actually do free 60 day returns. Here's why. And I've done this for years. I have never, literally never had anyone open up a return past seven days or even past 30 days, obviously, if they're not going past seven, the chances someone's going to go past 30 days or go to 60 days and try to open up a return is very, 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 very low. It can happen. I'm not saying it's impossible, <clears throat> but it's, uh, but it's very low and, um, it looks good to the, um, you know, my logic to it too, is that it. Yeah, see, Crispy's has it as well. He says I have a 60-day free return and seldom get any. It looks, it just looks good uh, for building consumer confidence. But I think either way, as if you do 30 or you do 60, you know, um, you, you're good, and it's going to help to protect you in these kind of situations. So you know, that's important. Another thing I thought was cool, and it's not going to be applicable to all people's listings. Uh, because you know yours is music specific with this being a record, but I like the fact that you took an MP3, <laughs> which you know that kind of really if the guy is scamming, you know that kind of destroys the person because you've you've got a recording of the actual of the actual record, which is pretty funny. That's that's pretty good evidence. <laughs> but you do that with any record over a certain dollar value, and usually yeah. I'm in the room and I can put my voice on it sometimes too so i can prove it's mine so i'm not just like ripping something or there'll be digital file you know numbers that i can prove it's my my burn copy from my pc or something it's essential in my opinion i've sold some high dollar records and not just records but a lot of other things and you, you've got to do that I, I just there's no other way to do it you know plus you can honestly some of the music has no copyright so i do things sometimes with with some of the the records some of those are dead just fyi yeah, absolutely. And um, other things I think are important in this, uh, and this kind of gets to the whole, you know, comment that you mentioned earlier where someone's saying something about Karen and just let it go and that kind of stuff. Um, I, I, I agree with you, Don. I think on 
you know, you and I, one of the things we have in common is we both do things on principle. <laughs> and so on principle, I'm not letting someone get away with that. And like you said, those things start adding up. And as you can see, you let go that $5, $10 theft, then that $5, $10 theft starts to turn into $500 of theft, $5,000 uh, $5, of um, you know, theft uh, on eBay. And that's a problem. That's not good for the platform. That's not good for sellers. Uh, you know, and ultimately it's bad for other buyers. It's just like shoplifting. It has an effect on everybody. So I think that the whole principle of defending yourself, uh, is good. I think people overestimate the amount of time that these things take. A lot of times people say, oh, it's a big waste of time. It's a big waste of time. It doesn't take that much time to go through this stuff. And, uh, 10, 10, 15 minutes. But again, I, I did a video for it because I get asked sure. all the time, what do you do? So again, I, I, I'm showing you that's in the front of the video if you're just catching on. So Valid right. points. Everything Dom's saying as well, obviously. Yeah, and don't don't give that refund right then and there. And it's the, do not give the refund without getting the return. That's a, and I know that sounds straightforward, but um, a lot of people do that. You know, you get this question all the time, Don. I see it all the time in my Facebook group, and we have twenty seven and a half thousand people in there, and we have new people coming in all the time. And someone will come in and say, "Oh, you know, I just." The person, you know, demanded this, just like you said, Don. And I, I gave the person the return. Now I gave the person a refund. Now what do I do? They didn't send the item back. Well, now you just learned the lesson not to do that. You can't do that. There's so there's another, um, there's another aspect too. If you just give them the money back, they can just go ahead and leave you bad feedback anyway. Yes. <laughs> so why would you do that? I. That's why they have to give that's me the right. item back. And that's if they say, hundred... well. Even if I want to give them a full refund and let them keep the item, they still have to open up that return. That's the only way right. I can refund it. And I always go about the tax aspect. I have to correct eBay to show that that I've returned it, that it's not in my files anymore, or that I let them keep it. And the only way to do that is for them to open up a return. Right. So think about that. Imagine that. You have a policy that says, I don't do return. You have a no return policy, which, by the way, there's no such thing. Yep, there's no true. such thing. You could you call take it. it you you could call it no returns all you want but if the if the buyer puts in an INID an item not as described claim eBay is going to force you to take it so that's why I say there's no such thing in reality as a no return policy uh, on eBay so imagine this right you you claim you have this no return policy um uh, but now yeah you kind of get a little bit nervous or whatever you wind up giving the refund and you think okay great now the person's going to be happy. I gave them the refund on the 5 to $10 item. Now I could just move on and enjoy the rest of my day. Well, guess what? They just left you a negative feedback that's now going to sit on your account for a year. And there can be some people who are potential buyers who look at that and say, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm nervous about this person based on what's somewhere, even though it's not true. So I really try to protect feedback as much as possible and, um, you know, just eliminate uh, all possibilities as much as possible that you can and react to it uh if something comes in um so uh and trying to protect yourself and be proactive against negative feedback is 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 crucial like i said if they i mean i there might i'm not sure they're doing it now don if you actually go through the free returns process if ebay would automatically block an attempt to give a negative feedback or if they would just remove it because because it used to be that they could still leave it, but then they would remove it after the case. But I think they may have changed that to just not even allowing it to be possible to, to leave it. I'm not I'm not 100 percent, though. I, I'm almost sure with top rated plus status. I've never seen one. I have yeah. had some that left it and then I was able to get it removed for various reasons. But the the last one that I know the person was going to leave because I didn't refund his, his return shipping. I don't have to do that. I kept it. He filed a report again. I never see. Let's let's run over this just for one quick second here. With top rated plus status, if somebody returns something, I don't have to give them all his money back. I know there's some other issues with normal sellers as well too. Right, but you can the, do fifth. Right, but the thing on this though, if you don't offer that 30 day return, you can't get this all covered. That's stipulated. There's one tiny line in the whole policy, and most everybody doesn't realize that. I've got a whole video just talking about that. But if if you follow through with the whole thing, it never hits. What I see at the end of the month is my report that says what they actually protected me from. And I see 
feedbacks on there quite often and I never see right. them on my account. So right. I honestly assume that it doesn't hit my account at all. Right. As long as they open up again, they, they don't have to even return the item once they open it up. And I've confirmed that from eBay. It says that in there, if they don't end up returning it, they still close the case and side in your behalf and you can't leave feedback as well as a top rated seller with the 30 day free return. So Right. So yes, that that's very, very important. So I think they probably are then just auto blocking them from coming in if anyone attempts to do that. Um, then my last point on it would be um, doing what, what Don did, which is uh, reporting uh, the person and letting them know, by the way, that you're reporting them. I'm a big believer uh, in that people need to understand that there's consequences to these types of behaviors. Um, I understand some people might not be comfortable, um, you know, letting someone know they might have some like safety concerns about mentioning something like that, but, but, you know, it depends on your personality, but my personality, uh, I definitely will let them know if I block someone like I did today. Uh, I tell them, I tell them, I just blocked you. I tell them why I blocked you for such and such reason. Uh, so, so they're aware and hopefully maybe there's a chance that they might, think back on that at some point and say, all right, well, maybe I shouldn't do that again because this is what's going to happen. So uh, I, I think that's important too. Because, you know, the way I look at it too, Don, is that when we stand up in these kind of situations, we stand up to people who are bullies, stand up to people who are scammers, um, we are actually protecting other sellers. I'm looking, people say, right. well, why did you do that? This person right. has done this to dozens and dozens and right. dozens and dozens of people. It's right. not just me that I'm thinking right. about here. That's right. I, I seriously help a lot of people right. in here at a direct right. basis. Dom does the same thing. I got Patreon. I literally talked, I, I did 17 emails in the last hour and a half, just addressing issues like stuff like this. And, and that's, it means something to me. Maybe it doesn't to everybody else. Maybe people think this is a joke, but I, uh, this is my living. This is how I feed everybody in my household doing stuff. I pay all my bills. I take this more. This is a business with the business you follow through regardless. That's the proper term, the proper steps you take. It, it, it's like night and day. You're not, I'm not running Don's, you know, throw junk out in the street kind of uh, shop. I'm running a full fledged business. I treat it as such. And that's, that's how you succeed. It's true. True. Uh, there was there was one other. Let me just answer a couple quick questions here. Uh, there okay. was a question on you technically don't have to offer, I think, 30 day free returns to be top rated. I think it has to do with shipping. I do. No, not, top rated plus. Top rated plus. Well, I'm a top rated plus. I'm like the high right. level. Top rated plus. You have to have one same or one day same, business that's handling. What I do. Yep, that's and I do. and you have to have a 30 day or longer free return period with a money back option but there's now, a top rated as well correct correct so that we're talking about top rated plus, plus. you did you did say plus don yeah yeah so i because yeah. there, there's 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 people get that confused on right on the differences i guarantee yeah. you though that some of these benefits do not apply to you if you do not do 30 day returns that is that is literally stated in there that they don't have to cover you or remove feedback in certain situations without you offering that extended service now let me just just one more quick question because there was like five or six people going about this about immediate payments i do not nor do i ever do immediate payments on anything i have people that pay me at the very end of the month and buy stuff throughout the month who've been buying from me for years it actually gets me more sales because people can combine five minutes before the show started i got somebody who just bought a whole bunch of comic books uh, amazing heroes is what they were i'm sure dom knows what that that is and the same thing i don't force anybody to buy it because at the end of the day carts don't work half the time lately so I can combine, I can do anything else I want. You know, I don't personally recommend it if you're selling collectibles, clothing, different story, immediate payment on clothing. There's no way though to steer it towards one category, or another. So you have to judge it on which category you sell the most and in which category you have the most to lose. And I guess would be the sake on that one. Yeah. I've not, I, it's funny because I've, I, I do have some items that are buy now. A lot of my items I have best offer on, but the ones that I have buy now and I don't have immediate pay on. Um, and the reason for that is because like you said, there are some people who sometimes might need a, you know, a day or two, but eBay policy is they should pay within 48 hours. And then you could start initiating the process of, you know, you don't have, uh, I, I, I've uh, got a seven day payment window automatically right. every, right. for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone has their own thing, whatever works. I and mean, obviously that's working for you. 
and that's not a problem. But um, you know, I, I but they did eBay did announce recently that they are going to try to move forward to implementing a immediate more of an immediate pay option for best offer situations and even for auction so yeah i saw um, that survey and that yeah. that cringes me because that's going to create a hassle for like three of my bi biggest people who buy religious <laughs> items for me because they pay at the end of the month all right. three of them they're yeah. older folks they wait till checks come in yeah one of them's got like seven grandkids and she does stuff i mean i've talked to these people for like five and six years so that's that's a nuisance to me i mean it bothers me that they would force us to do that but I, I don't know if it'll before but i think yeah, they'll we'll have, have it as an see. option so i don't think yeah by the way don I, I just came up with a new source of revenue for you what's that and maybe for me as well uh, based on scott's comment he said um he's asking people in the chat if they would pay five dollars for your blocked buyer list <laughs> I wouldn't. I saw a whole bunch of people asking with the records. I don't give out anybody else's name. I don't want to be called slanderous in any way. If I call out another person's channel name specifically, um, it could open you up to things. If you watch my videos, I never show a seller's name here on YouTube. So just FYI, I, yeah. I blocked everyone out in that video, spent some time doing it because again, my experience may not be someone else's and I don't, I'm not trying to rock the boat. I'm trying to show you how to fix it for yourself how to spend the time and track the stuff down. Let's say that person um, just left me feedback, didn't return it, negative feedback, and didn't return it, didn't open up a return. With the information that I pulled up, I could argue with eBay that there's three dozen other people that I talk to, you know, and I've got emails from them through your system that you can look at, and I can give you every name and every item that they sold, which I've done this once before, over a $4,200 item, mind you. So I, I've, I've, I've went this route. eBay removed the, the negative feedback because I could prove without a doubt that this guy was a scammer. I even went so far as to file a police report last time, supplied that to eBay with the information, and sure as heck, they did remove anything that this guy did. Now, mind you, they didn't remove him from the site, though. They just fixed my issue. So... Hey, Don, check this out. Uh, Scott Watson has another good point here. I know, I've not seen this before, but if this is accurate, this is pretty interesting. And this is a uh, further reason to put people's names on blocked buyer list. But uh, um, he said he read somewhere that the more eBay sees or has in their system that multiple sellers or, I guess, users have put someone in their blocked list, that increases the chance that eBay would take action on them in the future. I mean, that's totally logical. That makes sense. That's probably a reason eBay wouldn't do it because it's logical and makes sense. But no, I'm just kidding. I don't but. think they would have the thoughts, the 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 know how, or not the know how. I don't think they'd even think about that. that I mean, it, that's what I'm saying. No, it makes it makes too much sense, right? Well, the reason I say <laughs> that because this person who tried to scam me. They should have caught him by the quality right. of refund, complete refunds. We're not talking he got two bucks back. We're talking from the people that I talked to. He got all of his money back for every one of those feedbacks that you see in that video. Plus, I stopped looking after so many pages. So it's not like, you know, I just shot, you know, that's all he's got. There was probably 20 more pages of that exact same type of comment. So if I present that as, as, you know, hey, what's what's going on? How can you say that I'm in the wrong here when he's got 50 other people he's done the same thing to? You, eBay's Correct. not going to give you this information. Correct. They're not going to tell you they're going to help you. No. But if you can back up some form of information here that shows that this person is an habitual offender of this type of thing, and then they can track down and right. see that, yeah, this guy's got a refund for 400 records. And this is an area where eBay, if they're listening, they really have to do a lot of work because, for example, let's take auctions for a moment. Now, I know you don't do a ton of auctions, but you still do some. Occasionally, yeah. There's nothing just, wrong with the auction format right. for the right item. I mean, you are the auction professor, so, you know. You look... <laughs> well, they were all auctions when I started. <laughs> but I, oh, Don, man, I just got a big offer here right now. Let me just see. Hold on a second. Just came in. What should I do with this one? Who's making fun of police squad? Come on, Frank Drebin. How can you? How can you make fun of police squad? <laughs> um, was it, was, I'll get to that later. But uh, anyway, I'm just distracted by that. But so, uh, what was I saying? Uh, oh my gosh. Oh, with um, with e with eBay and the auctions. So they know if an auction is obviously paid for or not by somebody, right? I mean, they know that the auction. Someone won it, they have in their system, whether or not someone paid for it. So when I have, as what happened to me recently, where someone did not pay for a high-priced item that they purchased, 
And then I have to go through the whole thing of now going through, and now it's four days down from like five days to get it relisted and everything. But it really frustrated me when I went in and I looked and I saw that the person who won the auction, this is what you're talking about when you say go back and look at the comments, had at least five positive comments because that's all sellers could leave are positive comments about this person doesn't pay for auctions. Doesn't pay for auctions. Now, eBay should know that. And we shouldn't get to the point that we're at a sixth or seventh time. Well, you, you, there's there's a flaw with that thought because every time someone leaves a comment like that, as the seller of the item, you can have that feedback removed because it contradicts the type of feedback that it is. So most of the smart people who are scamming, if you leave a feedback like that, will have it instantly removed. That's a fact. I've had it done myself. So you can't. Right, but 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 even even forget the feedback for a moment. I was just saying the feedback lets me know that it happened. eBay should have in their system that this is some person who where a guy or woman doesn't matter, but who didn't pay for five straight auctions. Why is this person now allowed to keep going into other sellers' auctions and placing placing bids? Because they're not tracking it. That's right. But that's what I'm saying. That's what needs to be worked on. So get this. Okay. So there's a little tip, a little prime time tip for people out there. Okay. Here's what I suggest you do. And this helped me resell the item. This was actually on, it was a lot done of about a hundred or so damaged comic books. So it originally sold, and this is how it affects sellers, by the way. It originally sold on auction for $315. Okay. This is the guy who doesn't pay it. Now I did reach out to who was the second highest bidder, third highest bidder. But my experience is in that, in that case, they don't really want it anymore because they're removed from the emotion of the auction and they're just not interested. I never, never even send them out to the second or third yeah, anymore. So, so it's just, it does, yeah, I mean, you're not, you're not losing anything because they don't never take you up on it, at least in my experience. Same here. So, so, okay. So four days go by, I block the guy, right? So, or lady, whatever. And I relist it. They sell again. This time, by the way, they sell for $185 and 50 cents or something. So a hundred dollars less. Now I'm happy with it anyways, $185 for comic books that most people would have just thrown in the trash. But so, so still did, still did well on it. But my point is, is that by having it go up again, now it's not as fresh on the market. The people who had seen it before, you know, now they see it up again. Now they start wondering maybe why is it up again? I don't want to get involved in that again. And now you have, you know, a different pool of people who are bidding on it. doesn't go up so high, but here's what I did. Here's the tip. Here's what I did about, uh, I'd say an, a couple hours left to the auction. I went in and I looked cause you could see the bidding a track record of who's bidding on your stuff. And I clicked on every one of their feedbacks and I looked to see if there was any evidence that they weren't paying for auctions. And what I did is I banned every single one of those people who had any history of not paying for auctions. And sure enough, and I wound up, uh, you know, getting whatever the, you know, the price was, the 185 and the person who uh, who, you know, who, who bid on it, uh, paid for it. You can't completely eliminate it. Cause you never know that person who comes in at the end might have that history. But I, my point is, is I significantly reduced the risk by doing that, by just taking some time, going through the feedbacks and just blocking any of them from being able to bid on my, uh, stuff. And I waited until like a few hours were left because that those, my experience is those people are already in there putting in fake bids, you know, along the way that they don't intend to pay for it, driving up the price anyway. So um, I still but, don't understand what they get out of doing that. I mean, I just never, never. I mean, just even just for mischief, to, just mischief. I know, it's just it's I don't get it uh, to me. I don't get I wouldn't do something like that. Even if I was despise somebody, I just go about my own business, do my own thing and worry about my own money. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know why Robert's saying you can't send second chance offers anymore, because this was like a couple of weeks ago and I was able to send them. So unless that's. uh recently cut off recently cut off or something i don't know i was gonna say last time i had the option to do it too because yeah. i was i was worried and then i said i wouldn't do it anyway only because of that same thought of you they never respond right you know exactly you get in the auction frenzy while it's still live and it's like the old days where you, people would just sit there and watch auctions end at the last second to watch it shoot up like hundreds of dollars in the last five seconds or so right. usually right definitely 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 i mean so. it's great if that's legit but you know uh, too many times it's not. 
Now, now let me touch on another question because I had a couple other people hit me up when they saw the topic on the show. Graded items. Graded items. There's there's a lot of stuff going on about graded items. From my personal experience, from actually having stuff graded and authenticated, I have never had an issue with the cost into it, with the, the company I dealt with, or with an item that I sold to somebody ever. Never. And I, I've sent in a lot of things, autographs, comics, cards, and things like that. There's newer things that are getting graded these days, like video games, like um, mm -hmm. WADA and stuff like that, right. and VHS tapes. Now, I had a lot of people telling me that a lot of these are all bogus. Every one of those things is bogus. Now, I investigated some of those myself, and I've talked to people who sold some of those items. So they're not all bogus. Some people didn't respond. I didn't answer or check out everyone. I did the same thing with some of the video games, again, because I would like to know what's going on. My take on it, and I'll let Dom step in in just a second here, and he can go into detail because he does probably way more in grading than I do with comic books. I've seen some of his good sales with, with some of his comic books. So my take on it is, just like any other industry, is there are good people and bad people doing it. Sure, I will fully agree that there's obviously some sort of scamming in it. This isn't like related to the Disney Black Diamond because those aren't graded. That's just individual people doing it. These are apples and oranges. So whether PSA was involved in some things, it's probably not the company. It's probably select individuals and dealings and stuff. A lot of the people who work for these companies are in the industry already and buy and sell on the side. So they would know people. But I would never say that the whole thing's all screwed and scammed and everybody's screwing everybody over and all the grading is scammed because I personally trust the authentication on on the, the, the autographs. I trust the grading far better on a comic book, them doing it than me personally. Um, so again, th there's, there's valid reasons why that that's important in my book. There's valid reasons why those items sell for the, the, the amounts of money they do. The return on my investment for grading is a no brainer. It's like a, sometimes a tenfold increase in the value of an item. Again, then people say that part's a scam, but for, in my opinion, it's not people have to be, if they're going to invest they're going to be covered from insurance. This goes back to investment. If you're investing in something, you can get insurance on collectibles. Hence why the markets are going with all of these gradings. They're speculators. It's not a collector spending $4,000 like everybody keeps assuming. It's not usually a collector. It is someone speculating on investment potential. Again, you got to watch what's going on. That's what's going on. I've been trying to tell people this. That's the reason why these are valid services because of Wall Street and big bucks taking over and trying to to write the, the way so that they can be covered financially from a bank loan, from putting this together like in, in like the housing crash. They want to bulk and build these up together in, in equity packages and things like that. There's a whole bunch more going on. If you don't like look at Wall Street Journal or anything, you're probably not going to have a clue on this, but that's what's driving the prices. So anyway, I'll let it go out that part and swing it over to Dom there on that one. Um, I agree with you. Uh, surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I do think there's definitely a, a value uh, for sure in grading. Uh, for me, mostly I'm doing that with graded, uh, comic books, although I have gotten sports memorabilia, uh, graded before as well. I have numerous, uh, graded comic books available uh, in my eBay store. In fact, that's what I was just reacting to right now was a $350 offer that came in on a single highest signed graded comic book adventure. Right. Yeah. Adventures comics, uh, number 372 signed by Neil Adams. Uh, so I just sent a counter to it. So we'll see what happens. Maybe it'll sell during the show, but, um, one of the big advantages, uh, that CGC has for comic books up until recently is that uh, they were the only grading company that had a census available in which you could actually go in and you could see all the comic books for a particular issue that were ever graded by that company. And then you could tell, do I have the one that's the single highest graded or the second highest graded or tied for the highest graded? And it's broken down by signed copies and you know, all sorts of other specifications go into it. And that's enormously helpful. Now, CBCS recently started doing that as well. But up until recently, it was only CGC who had that. And that's what gave them dominant market share uh, that continues to this day. Now, there are problems with grading and there are 
um, issues as there are with any industry that need to be worked out. You know, if you listen to, uh, you know, some of the comic YouTube channels or just follow things that are going on in that area, and I'm sure the same thing goes on with cards, is that you, you know, comics get graded all the way up to a 10 point scale, but you know, most people don't get a 10 and don't get a nine, a 9.8 would be more common of the, you know, really high grades that people are looking after looking for that near mint mint copy. But, you know, you could have two things graded as a 9.8 by a comic company. Same thing with a card. You have something graded as a nine and you could look at one and look at the other one and say, this one looks actually more desirable to me that I'd act. They both have the same exact grade. It's the same I exact issue, but I actually, as a collector, I want that one because that one looks a little bit better. And there, there is some subjectivity that goes into it, of course. And so there's, um, then there's, but questions. there's no intent for the people who are, are tr I feel that the people, most of them that are grading love comic books or love cards or love the, the, they wouldn't be doing it if they didn't like it in my book. So I don't think it's mischief when someone grades one, one, what everybody has a slightly no. different opinion. On no, 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 not mischief, but, but, you know, like one of the things that CGC has been called out on a lot is that they have to be more transparent with the standards that they're using for uh, grading the comic. So it, it's just, more understandable to people why they're getting the grades that they're getting you know, like gold mine standards with a very specific stated reference for every right. issue that you get yep correct i mean there's a new i don't know if many people heard of it but you know there's, there's really if you're into comics there's um there's really four main grading companies there's there's cgc which is the most popular there's cbcs which is the second most popular there's pgx which most people do not want and then there's another company that recently came out called egs now, EGS is pretty cool because what they do is they'll actually make things like uh, custom labels. Don, you would love this to the comic book. But, like but the only thing I would say on that is would they not garner less of a value because CGC is the, the category specific uh, acceptable or accepted um, leader? You yeah, I mean? yeah, absolutely. You, if you could choose, you get CGC. But there are some people that are just mad at the company. They're, yeah, fr I know. I've, they're I've frustrated. Seen I'm not. There are people who have had their books stolen that have been sent in. I actually right now um, have a local comic uh, shop dealer who I know who sent in a hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of comic books to get graded, and he got Is a. That just one comic book, though. <laughs> no, no, he had like multiple. Uh, copies, for example, of Ultimate Fallout 4. Like he had like crazy, crazy comic books in there. Um, and he was also sending some in th through a, um, a customer for consignment. So they all went into one batch because you get a discount. Damn, and he got a phone call a that, oh, uh, sorry, um, we can't find the box. We can't find it. And he's like, well, I'm glad that I have insurance for, you know, a hundred dollars. Let's say it was a hundred thousand dollars worth, a hundred thousand dollars worth. And they said, well, uh, we don't really think it was worth that much. We actually think it was worth around 25,000. And so now he's got his attorney involved and like this, is the kind of stuff that could happen sometimes. Another case that happened recently it was that was actually documented on YouTube is a guy who sent in a golden age comic book that was worth like a ton of money. And um, he, he wanted to get it. Uh, I think he would just want to get it like re slabbed or re holdered. And he got a, a message from CGC that said, Sorry, um, we accidentally ripped the cover off. <laughs> so, and they're like, We could give you like, uh, you know, compensation towards future grading. You know, we'll, we'll oh take it. God. And it's like, I don't want that. Like, I want my con. So there's things like that that happen that drive people to other companies sometimes. But uh, the reason I was mentioning EGS is that they're reacting to this whole thing about the standards and they're actually being very transparent with what their standards are reacting to that. So you have market forces that are just going back and forth, reacting to one another. And eventually, you know, we'll see if there's enough room for another company to kind of emerge and you know, get more in the picture and start encroaching on CGC space. But right now for comics, there's nothing close. Yeah, I would agree with that. But I've never done anything with comics other than CGC personally. Right. No, you're, you're making the right choice for sure. I had not There was another question on here. Hang on if I can figure out where it went to. My thing's just flying around on here. Hang on just a second here. Uh, back to the, the block bitter list, because there's still folks that brought that the block bitter part up. Again, people say let's share and do all that kind of thing. 
there's all sorts of different factors with with sharing out those lists with each other. You're limiting potential sales just because one seller was ripped off doesn't necessarily mean the other. Some sellers could have accidentally, you know, booted the wrong person. They could have made a mistake. They could have just assumed they were trying to rip them off and really they weren't. There's a lot of misconceptions sometimes if like um, if they're especially from another country, sometimes like that, where, where maybe it's just more a, a cultural difference that we don't understand some of the terminology they used or, you know, there's there's more to it always than that. So I personally would recommend just sticking to your own personal list, unless it's someone who is like ripping off everybody. That's a different story. But again, yeah. I, I, I won't post right. those. Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not a I won't. Post right. those. There, there could be extreme anything there could always be some kind of extreme exception or something but um like uh, to your point don like in my facebook group we have a policy that we do not allow people to put in you know buyers names like that uh you know if there's any kind of issue and then try to get everyone in the group to try to block the person like because you know we're just seeing snapshots of what's posted we don't know the whole story behind the scene or something and you know um, we want to be real careful with that. So that's why we don't do that stuff. I totally get the temptation and I get the ask and I get the request because I've gotten that on my channel before. If I post some kind of scam thing, I get a lot of people who say, well, you know, you should post the person's name, post the person, let everyone know the person's name. And you know, sometimes it's not, it's not really necessary. You're really just trying to illustrate a point and you're trying to instruct and tell people you know, give suggestions in terms of what to do if something like that happens to them. That's really the it, more It's a principle thing. issue without giving inf it's an information issue. And as right. a business, again, if you're if you anybody out there listening as a business, I wouldn't share information of your buyers. There are some rules and actual laws in some states. So if you give out personal information and a, a name with what you feel they're doing wrong could be enough personal information to get you as a business in trouble. So just, just just be safe. Do it smartly. If you want to tell a friend or something, hey, don't buy from this guy, that's all on you. I don't see anything wrong with that technically. But again, that's that's above and beyond what a business should do. You know, I, I don't, I've never shared stuff like if I worked in a restaurant, I'd never go and offer any information to another restaurant. You know, you've got competition and, you know, all that kind of thing. I'm not wishing anybody ill harm, but me trying to stop someone from doing it is one thing, but me just giving out people's names and stuff is something totally different. Yeah. So, yeah. And you got, you're right. You do have to be careful because you could have someone who's just tries to legally go after you or something. You never know. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. I've been sued as a restaurant manager for people when I fired people and, and just all sorts of things can, can arise from just a simple thing, you know, firing somebody for, for violating the rules on multiple occasions. And then you get sued, you know, you did all the right things as long as you have your ducks in a row and all your documentation to back up what you're doing. But if I'm just anybody, if you're just shooting out names and stuff, you can get in trouble. Just like I see, people do videos and they're recording them talking to like eBay and stuff. That's against the law. So I always cringe when, when people say, Hey, I saw this person talking. You should never do that. You should never post it. There are laws on privacy aspects as a seller. There is, a unless you get permission though, unless you get, permission. unless you get permission, but in, right. in California, it doesn't work that way. And if you're talking to eBay, chances are with, with like um, uh, anchor store, I'm talking to eBay here in this country, 99.999% of the time. So, right. You just keep keep track of the rules. There, there's a privacy of your customer base as well. So you don't want to violate that. You don't show addresses, names, or any personal information if you can ever help it at all. And that, again, helps with, with theft and fraud because you're not giving people information. Maybe you accidentally gave out a good customer's name instead and, you know, they get harassed or anything else like that too. So the scammers, that, that's, that's the point though. Um, again, I thought there was... My vision isn't good enough, I guess, to read the the top one here. But just a second, I was trying to find one more that somebody asked. Why don't you hop over for just a second while I see yeah. if I can figure out? I, I will answer this real quick. I know it's not a comic show, but I get this all the time. A question that Heather Reynolds just asked, which is how much they charge for grading comic books. Uh, the answer to that is there is no set price. You have to look at the website. Uh, go to CGC's website. It completely, completely depends on the age of the book it depends on the estimated value of the book it depends on how fast you want them to get it to you um best case scenario it's probably going to minimally and this includes shipping and everything is going to cost you around 36 bucks or so but um you know and then it depends on if you're going to send multiple things in at once um but 
that is best case scenario. And at this point, you're probably going to wait about a year to get it back. They so, shut it off for a while. Yeah. And keep, yeah, right. And keep in mind too, that when you pay for expedited services, the expedited services don't kick in until they open the box. So it could sit there for three months and that doesn't mean that as soon as it gets there, they're going to rush to open it. Expedited means as soon as they open it and process it, that's when expedited kicks in. Ex so expedited it. processing is what it's right. Right. So keep that in mind, but it does highly depend. Like if, if you start sending in like, you know, Don, if you had like action comics, you know, like number one or something, they're going to charge you a percentage it's yeah. at that point. Once it gets to a certain level, you're going to get charged percentages of value. So, and it, it can be very expensive. It could be very expensive to get that book graded. Yep. They're, they're, think about it. They're not going to charge the same amount to grade, you know, Detective Comics 27 or Action Comics number one as they're going to charge you to, you know, grade Garfield number 36. It's just, <laughs> it's it's the same sense. thing for autographs. Elvis is autographed. The, the two we sent in cost us $200. That's right. Fred, Frederick Dent Grant cost us 50 bucks. That's each. right. So we sent That's in right. five of those. So it all adds up. Which makes sense because, you know, for the grading company, they know it's not a scam. You know, it's they know, hey. You have to have what? experts in for that specific person that can tell the difference in his signatures. True, true. And they also know what you're going to do with it when you get it back graded. You're going to sell it for a crazy amount of money. And there's value inherent in that service. They could do that for you. And they deserve to get compensated for that. I did that. That happened when I got my Joe DiMaggio baseball um, verified. Uh, so How when you go, he? he was like, and this is several years ago, but I I think it was around a hundred bucks or so it might've been a little bit less, but th th I did it through JSA. And when you go on there, they'll actually have the list of all the players that could get verified. And you'll see like this one, you know, JSA, like you said, thing, this yeah. one's 10 bucks, this one's 15 bucks, this one. And then the more famous players they charge more for, just like you said. Yeah. George Washington was way up there. I know yeah, that was Bay, Bay Babe Root's going to be up there, folks. Yeah, there's some that I think were like four and five hundred dollars just to authenticate. Of course, their signature might sell for ten grand, so it's a different story. <laughs> Elvis the King. Yeah, I got my my Elvis shirt on as always. I got three of uh, these. By the way, I just want you to know, Don. I do. I know we do talk and stuff, but um, I do notice that you still wear the professor shirt that I sent you. So it's I wearing out. I, I I I'm gonna have to send you another one. Holidays are coming up, so <laughs> expect Jeez. another. Expect another Christmas present coming. So. It's wearing out though. It's peeling. I'm bad with my. I don't. I never really. I don't get my. There you go. I got my primetime treasure hunter shirt on right there. I don't. I got those shirts, but I, I never I wear my own I don't shirts. I don't brand very, uh, as well as I should. There we go. I don't brand hardly at all. So <laughs> I threw the shirts up like two years ago, and I haven't touched. And I got all kinds of designs we did. I just never pushed them out. Time. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Scott likes Elvis. I can read some of it. Why do some Disney VHS, there aren't any, the only Disney VHS that goes for thousands is cars. That's the only one. The rest of them are all scams. Even the, the X rated little mermaid doesn't even go for about a couple hundred bucks on the best day. Those, those black diamond ones are all scams. It's money laundering. That's, that's my take on it. But the cars one goes for thousands. I promise you, I've seen it personally I, sell for that. I did a video on this, Don. Uh, please. It's not on it. Well, I think I mentioned the Disney VHS tapes in it. Go look at my video on the Oreo cookies, the red Oreo cookies. And it talks all about this. And you could see, I go into the whole explanation in terms of why some of these things look like they have inflated values and what some of these people, actually, it's kind of ties to this video in terms of scamming. Um, Don, what's well, up? You do agree with the black diamond, do you not? Oh yeah. Yeah, no, totally. But what I'm saying is that, um, what they're doing, sometimes it's not a money laundering situation. What it is sometimes is that they're going in and they're placing fake bids to just jack up perceived value of something, especially when it's something crazy that comes out like those red Supreme Oreo cookies. Do you remember those? No. The Supreme? Yeah. There was this whole thing. I don't buy brand, sugar. The brand Supreme had come together with Oreos to make supreme oreo cookies and everyone thought and it was being reported in the media that these cookies were selling for thousands of dollars and they were basing it off of ebay completed 
sold prices, but they were fake completed sold prices because all they were, and I break this down in the video, I won't go into it now, but you can see I show all the evidence and everything, how specific people were going in there and artificially just jacking up auction prices and then it would just end and what ebay would make it look like to people that it was a completed sale but it was never paid for and then they were using that as the basis to just inflate the whole price range of these cookies you know that people were asking for and then to make it look like you know hey well if it looked like it sold for ten thousand dollars well it's a great deal right now you could get them for only a thousand dollars so you know these are the kind of things that are going on and well, people this- look at Go ahead. Uh, this goes right back to eBay could just remove all those listings. You know how simple it would be for eBay to just type in a little bit, a couple lines of code that would sort out the ones that never got paid for and just remove them. But so, you know why they're not doing it, don't you? I heard the reason, and I'm not sure if it's true, but I, I don't know. You want me to say it or you well, just say I it? personally think they the more data they have, they sell that information to other sites. So the more information that they have, the more obviously money they're going to get for that information, like WorthPoint, for an example. Oh, okay. Okay. That's one possibility. I don't, I don't know the exact reason. I don't have it confirmed. What was your, what was your thoughts? Uh, well, I heard is that I didn't come up with this independently. Oh, okay. This is what somebody told me. Um, what, and this, the person told me this saying again, it's hearsay of course, but said they had a, their husband worked for eBay back in the, in the past and knew the reason. Apparently the reason was that they were using that number to show that to shareholders as like, as like, this was a, to, to basically make it look like these were actually sales that were coming through, even though they knew that they weren't, but that they were putting this in as like a way to make it look like that, the, that the, it was bringing in more money. Again, I don't know if that's true. Might you know not how be. illegal that would be with the SEC? Right, right. <laughs> that's what I was like. Yeah, I, wow, I that... can't imagine. That'd be, I don't know how many felonies and manipulation, and, and that would be like jail time, like 20 years for anybody would, who was. You would think that is illegal, right? So well, it's definitely illegal. <laughs> right. I, I, I'd be shot. Well, then again, they attacked, you know, I know. Right. Husband, so. <laughs> so who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. But it does. It is strange, right, though? I mean, like, what's the explanation? Why they won't remove I think that? it's for the data because they get money off of that. That's like secondary. Oh, but even but even so, Don, in that instance, isn't that fake, too? Because they're sent, they're selling. They would be selling. Um, work- no, because they could just put in the, the contract that will just give you all ended listings. They don't have to say whether it's sold or not. They can just say ended because the sites that import them are using an API and that API would True. probably sort them versus. Cor- correct. But, you but, know what they, I mean? but right. But they would be selling it to worth point knowing that they're selling, that they're selling them misleading data. Yeah, well, as long as there's nothing in there that says that you can't supply us with misleading data, word for word, they can get away with selling it any way they want, in my opinion. All they're doing is selling their database of ended listings, and they could just literally phrase it that way. I think WorthPoint would rather have all of the data, even if some of it's not good, because, again, it makes their service worth money as well. Now, I don't know any deals with WorthPoint, so right, I can't right. say it's for speculation. sure. I'm just, yeah, speculation, because I couldn't imagine eBay giving that much information to a site that's going to sell and market it. We know with the user agreement, eBay gives the permission to, we don't own any of our listings. So once they're on eBay, they own the rights to them unless you have a printed out piece of paper that says you own the trademark to the images or something like that. And then you're going to have to fight eBay just to keep them from them sharing those images with somebody else. I've already done that whole spiel all the way up to corporate office. So, you know. Well, and what Joe said is what, what I was getting to in the video too, is that allowing the listings to, to look like they sold for that price, keep them up there, even though they were not paid for, could drive up other sale prices, which they means could more the, even- They could run the category. That's that's true because if, 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 I, if I could, domination of a category, and that's what I, I think we're getting at here. If I have 40% of a category, all the category- my prices run the category. Even if the prices weren't before those higher prices, I come in with my pricing scheme that I've always done since day one, and I'll take over that category. So it'll mean everything else in that category, if they want to sell it comparatively, they'll all have to raise the price to right. compete up with what I'm selling them for. Sure, right. there'll be some that sell them cheaper, but 
that's the overall basic concept. The prices in your in what you're saying would be the same basic principle. If a bunch of them start going up, it's going to pull the rest right. of the category up with it. That's right. that's a thing that happens with stock markets. Right. If like home housing in one area is hot, it can pull up housing in another area. Hence the bubble we had not too you know in back in the early two thousands. That is true. And we should talk about Don. I know you talked about it in your last live show, but someone just mentioned it in the in the chat. Let me see who it was. Uh, Logan. Uh, shill bidding. Because that's scam. Yeah, yeah. That's that's definitely a scam. And that goes back to the grading and what's been uh, uh, right. accused. I, I've had a lot of people post slanderous remarks on that VHS thing. I can't allow those to go out on YouTube because I'm not going to condone somebody making a statement without, without providing proof. You can call somebody a scammer, but if you can't prove it, that's slanderous. So I, I don't do that. I don't allow posts. Shield bidding is a thing. I, I fully right. agree. I've seen right. some cases where without a doubt, I would say it was a shield bidding. The intent at the end of the day, whether it was to jack up another person to pay more, maybe the case or to artificially inflate a listing to make it look like it's sold for more again, which, which is what you were talking about as well. Like with the, the Oreo, right. the Supreme Oreo. So right. it's, they're all valid points. We, the only person who's the gatekeeper of the information is eBay though. That's it. The only thing we we're lucky enough to at least be able to look at like feedbacks to at least confer that this person's good, this person's bad and stuff like that. But eBay has all that information back to what they aren't or are looking for. They're not looking for a lot of things that the, this the, just an average person would say, why aren't you looking for that? It shocks me that they aren't catching people who are getting full refunds on multiple items the 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 person with the records he did that to the, the other one that i showed you was from two days ago a day before mine so it's not like this person's just randomly doing it that's two one two and a you know two consecutive days and i didn't even contact all of them so they should be able to catch these there should be no reason why we would have to worry about it because they can see all that information how can they not see it if we call and point it out they can see it then why couldn't they see it before it's just a lack of concern. They're free flying still. They don't even know all the aspects of what they should or shouldn't do. And I'm not blaming that on eBay, but you know, at this point, they've been doing this long enough. They should know all of this. It shouldn't be you and me or, or some other channel sitting there calling this stuff out. They should have already fixed it. It should have never been an issue. It would save them money. It wouldn't just save us money. It would save them money from all potential issues that arise from it. So that's true. That's true. It's just like I said earlier about the person not paying for their auctions, you know, who comes to my auction, pays $315. So well, doesn't pay, you know, wins it for $315 and doesn't pay. It has, you know, record over the past six months and not paying for five or six auctions. Like I shouldn't have to be the one that noticed that. Like eBay should notice that in their system and prevent that. Oh, but so. let me, because that was one of the questions. Uh, now that you said that, you can go in there into uh, site preferences, and if they have more than, say, one or two unpaid item claims on their account, they can't bid on your items. So if you want to eliminate part of that, you can go ahead and block them from bidding. Again, it has to be in a 30-day period. So if yeah. they did it last month or once right. a month, they're free I have that. Yeah, I, I have, figured you did. But I, I have know. Yeah, it was just it was spread out over the last six yeah, months. That's so. what I was going to say. They do one yeah. a month or two a month or whatever it is to, to gain. And most a, of the people who do that don't even realize that you can block them. It, it is right. my opinion. So for all right. those who don't know that, go in there and, and change that setting today to stop people from at least in the same month time frame. Again, like with Dom's case, and I've had some where obviously they hadn't paid for items. But again, if it's spread out over a certain length of time, there isn't a whole lot you can do. But I think. In a 12 month period, if let's say they haven't paid for 10, 15 items, that's enough. They should be booted from the site. That could be 10 percent of everything they purchase is, is a scam and they're not paying for it. Right, right. All right. Let me let me throw out uh, and thank you. Angels don't fall for subbing to the channel. Appreciate it. Um, let me let me bring up another thing. And I, I don't I think I know your answer on this. Would be, but I actually did a whole whole video on it. So my opinions out there on this. But I hear this often. Which is the following, and it relates to scamming. Someone just made me an offer on an item. They don't have any feedback. Doesn't that mean they're a scammer? No, <laughs> not at all. So, so that comes up a lot. A lot of people even have pe people blocked 
from being able, because you could set it up that way too. You could block people with no feedback to be able to purchase from you. So you don't set it up that way. I don't set it up that way either, but we probably have the same reason. But what's your reason behind it? Uh, everybody's new at some point. So I would never block a zero on there at all. I just sold something to someone with zero feedback today. They paid for it within five minutes. So uh, I, I've never had the most of the scammers. And I mean, probably 90% of every scammer I've had has had a lot of feedback. Even when we bought a, a, a PlayStation from somebody off eBay and they had like 900 or they had a lot, hundreds of feedback. They sent us a brick. So it doesn't right. have to be. It's honestly, I think most all of the scammers I've ever gotten have been somebody who's got a lot of feedback. The person with the record one, he has almost 2,000 feedbacks. So they've been Correct. on for years. Correct. Correct. So, so keep, Right. Exactly. I totally They know how it works. They know how to rip people off. It's not, a, again, somebody with zero feedback could be somebody who's booted off. They got a new account. But majority of the new people won't even know how to rip you off if they're new to eBay in the first place. Correct. And keep in mind a couple other things. If you're a scammer and you want to look more appealing to a seller to have them accept your offer, you're going to want to have an account that has some feedback on it. So what a lot of them do is they actually buy and use dead accounts that people have been used for a long time that have 300 feedback. I've seen it happen. There's a site There's a site yeah. on, on the, the dark web that you can actually buy. That's right. You know, yep. That's right. I actually had a con I had to have eBay contact somebody who was the original owner of our account because someone completely took it over and was just scamming people all throughout uh, all throughout eBay on it. Um, number two, and this is especially more important nowadays with uh, eBay, um, you know, getting your items advertised on you know on Google, for example, or seen on Google, listed on Google, is so someone's out there and is looking for a particular thing. And they type it in and they're just doing a regular search on it. Maybe they just even want to learn more about it, find out what happened about this particular item or collectible. And then they, it, the first thing takes them to an eBay listing. And next thing you know, they wind up on your page. This has happened to me many times. Seen and then myself. the person says, holy crap, I want to buy this thing. Now imagine, I say this all the time. Imagine if I would have blocked this person, like that's no sale for that. And you know, that person is less likely by the way, think about it. They're less likely to try to play games with, you know, throwing in low ball offers and stuff, especially if they like really want the item, they're new to the platform. You know, they're more likely to just be like, okay. And maybe just more likely to even just pay up. So I'm same with you, Don. I've had more bad experiences with people who have a lot of feedback Bar than I have with people with zero feedback. Far more, far more. Um, I don't know how, maybe we'll just go till like 9.30. Is that yeah, too late? Yeah, that's, cool. that's cool. Let me just, no, I think I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, sh I just lost my total Happ train of thought. Don't worry, Don. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> yeah, I had it, it, it almost happened to me a couple times tonight, but I somehow recovered. I don't know what's going on. Must yeah, be it the does that to me. Must it's be the Mountain age. Dew. Must be the Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. I got iced tea <laughs> with no sugar in it. <laughs> Well, I got iced tea the other day. Um, you know, I don't remember if you remember the brand Sips. <laughs> it has like no, a bunch never. of S's on it. Who in the chat remembers Sips? I saw it. I was like, oh my God. I actually texted my brother. Is that like a bottle or something? Well, yeah, he used to have it as a bottle, but this came in a container and it was iced tea. And it just brought nostalgia back to me. I said, I could have sworn we drank Sips when we were kids. So I sent it to my brother. I said, hey, did we ever drink this? And he's like, no, he's like, yeah, he goes, but it was other brand. He goes, it was other flavors, not iced tea, but I bought it anyway. But the problem with it is that it was, is iced is like real brewed iced tea with real sugar in it. Not like the high fructose corn syrup that really makes it taste good. So actually to me, I mean, I like sugar stuff, but I'm very particular with my iced tea. Like it, you know, it's just, I, I can't have it with like real sugar in it and it just doesn't taste right to me. So, uh. I'm not, I'm not going to only do brew. The wife's got one of those uh, iced tea brewers or whatever. I only yeah. do brewed tea. I don't yeah. do any bottles or anything. I'm cheap too. So I won't buy a bottle of tea well, or a mix I, usually. I drive my, I drive my wife crazy with sugar stuff. So as you can tell from like my family size stuff. tea bags is what we use. <laughs> well, Mrs. Primetime doesn't mind the Mountain Dew stuff, but what does drive her crazy is she is a huge, um, maple syrup like pure maple syrup fan she loves it. and you get a lot of that here in central new york we just got back from the new york state fair two times one of the biggest places we hit is the horticulture center where you get all sorts of you know pure maple syrup stuff and i don't mind it in like snacks and stuff they make like fudge out of it which is pretty good but um you know in terms of like putting it over my pancakes 
you know, I want the log cabin or the Aunt Jemima. Like, and I joke, I call that the real syrup and I call her syrup the fake syrup, even though hers is really the real syrup, but it drives her crazy. I'm like, are you going to put that? She, she's sitting there with pure maple syrup, you know, tapped out of a tree. And I look at her, I go, are you going to put that fake syrup on the pancakes? <laughs> I love pancakes. I honestly haven't had a pancake in probably like two or three years. It's oh been a my long God. time. Don, you got to eat some pancakes. That's the syrup. I got to stay away from the sugar. So yeah, have a pancake on me. No, I don't. I, I, especially at <laughs> night. I try not to eat after a certain point, even these days. So. Well, we're going to have to do a Don and Don physical meetup one day we were supposed to do that before covid Canada. But, um yeah we were but uh you know you're not too far away from me in ohio so uh hopefully once this pandemic settles down we'll be able to do something like that that'll be cool that'll be a cool video imagine that <laughs> i told you when we get to get that way i mean i still want to go to uh do some some traveling in through canada as a fan i've been there myself my oldest has been there on his own with some of his friends and stuff they went way up though too but uh I'd love to go sourcing up there. I've got a couple people who invited me actually, and somebody I've talked to for years. So I, one of these days I'm going to get that way and we'll come back down through the New York side after the falls and maybe meet up in Niagara or something. Yeah, absolutely. You would love to, you would love to go sourcing around here. There's a lot of cool places. Yeah. The, my favorite place to source was when, up, when we were up in uh, Boston, up near um, Saugus in that area there. We went to Brimfield. Oh my gosh. Brimfields yeah. was the best sourcing yes. venue i've ever seen in my it, entire it, life yes it's awesome dom but but if you ever come up here july or august and i'm going to put a video up on it soon another place and it's one of the top top places to go source in the entire people come from all over the united states other countries to come to it is the madison balkful antique festival it's incredible uh it's just amazing it's about an hour away from me and i've gotten there several times i just went recently in fact i met up with dave uh paper Goy there from million dollar peddlers and um uh, we had a blast so uh you would love it it's it's just it's incredible i mean you could literally spend uh, an entire day in one tiny section that's how many vendors are crammed in it just takes over the whole town it's crazy it's so much fun yeah, that's how Brimfields is usually. That's just packed up there. Yep. I love those places. We used to go to, uh, there was a, a traveling one called Renninger's and they would travel around and do like antique festivals that would take yep. up like a whole city. And those yep. are the ones that were always the best because you got vendors from all over the place, yep. all different levels of vendors. Some, you know, were great at this and great at that. So you had variety. That was the best part there. I always found like a car full every time we went. Yeah. But those were the old days before, you know, it's it's changed so drastically. Let, let me shout out some other news that just happened here for those. And I wanted to do a video, but I won't get to at this point. If you're following Shopify, and I talk about Shopify a lot. I personally think, and I know this is off topic, but they just signed a deal with TikTok. Now, I'm not a TikTok person at all, so and I don't do most social media, but shopify is the one to watch if somebody's going to channel or challenge amazon it's going to be shopify um as i've been talking for the last couple of years shopify has now since taken over ebay they're number two and they are growing so if, if you want the future of reselling in my book shopify at least that model will be what you're looking for so you know that's why i'm getting in now before it's too late get your presence known again i'm not I don't have any affiliation with Shopify, but there's a lot of stuff going on and everyone keeps leading back to Shopify. Google has a deal with Shopify. Google's shopping app deal with Shopify. Shopify is gobbling stuff up while all the other people aren't paying attention. eBay can't compete up against it. Amazon can't at this point. It, it might be Shopify taking the number one spot in five years is, is a possibility. So be on the ball and, and pay attention to those things. If you as a reseller, you got to know not just eBay, but all the other things affect what happens on eBay, you know. Yeah. So just FYI. Yeah. So. Sure. I think we're getting there right Man, now. It's, time flew by, Don. Yeah, I was gonna say it's almost nine thirty. So why don't why don't I, I allow you to do the you go ahead and do um, your final thoughts? I'll do mine, and then we'll probably end it about there because we're we're heading down towards the bottom line here. Well, yeah, I mean, just to recap, just make sure you're um, taking all the proper steps to defend yourself. I thought there were a lot of great tips uh, that came out in this video, um, things to do, way to think through these cases, uh, certain philosophies that you should have. And um, 
you know, I think that, um, you know, if you follow those steps, they could uh, really help you out. And don't feel um, shy to ask, you know, colleagues what they would do in a, a situation, someone who you trust, someone who you think has good ethical, you know, principles, good morals and stuff, reach out to them, you know, and ask them what they would do. Someone, um, you know, with, uh, you know, with experience in the, in the platforms. Um, so, but on the lighter side, Don, uh, and I know we're a few months away, but it's right around the corner. You know what I start thinking about uh, this time of year, Don? I mean, when we start getting towards the fall season, I start thinking of Santa Claus bells and Christmas time, and I start thinking of the Don and Don Christmas special. We'll so, definitely uh, have one this we're, year. We're going to have to start planning for that because, uh, you know, it's one of my favorite days of the year. <laughs> one quick, somebody mentioned Webster, Florida. I used to be a vendor and set up at Webster, just FYI. I've done Webster the whole time I lived in Florida. So I was a antique vendor at the flea markets myself. I've done in booths too as well. So Webster used to be good. My best comic book purchase back in those early days was at Webster. I picked up like 175 EC, EC now, I'm telling you, vintage golden age, silver age ECs for like two bucks a piece. Not in great oh condition, God. but. We made like, I don't know, the wife would probably remember the number. It was close to $5,000 profit off that one purchase off there. But that was a Webster purchase in the middle of the morning or middle. Uh, it was still dark. I had a flashlight when I found that lot, obviously. So, oh but anyway, uh, we'll, we'll end it here. Uh, final thoughts. I've got a Patreon video up. Obviously, thanks to Dom here for coming on tonight. If you haven't, for some crazy reason, not subscribed to Don, I've got links all over. There's a, The link to Dom's channel is directly at the very top of my description box. You can't miss it. Check out Dom's channel as well. Great guy. I only talk to very few people. I don't have time to do a lot, but Dom has been a good friend for a very long time. We converse quite regularly, so he's the real deal. I don't mess with you know a lot of the the the... YouTubers who just want to get your money for YouTube and they don't really resell. Dom's the real deal, 100%, 100% across the board. So thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Check him out and I will let you all go and see you again. My next video I think will be up on Saturday for everybody else. Bye, everyone.